let me sort of officially kick things off. Uh, my name is Michael Goldberg, and I'm the executive director of our Beal Institute for Entrepreneurship at, at Case Western Reserve. I also uh, teach uh, entrepreneurship in our business school at Weatherhead. And it's great um, to welcome back to Cleveland, although she's sitting in Tennessee, uh, Lauren Devaney, uh, who's from Hudson, Ohio, deep links to Case, which she may get into um, uh, as she introduces herself. And Lauren and I connected, actually we've never met in person, which is sort of the new COVID world. We were supposed yeah. to get together at a conference um, in um, San Diego, which didn't take place. Um, so it's awesome to do this. And, and Lauren um, is somebody that's been really helpful as we at the Beale Institute have been sort of thinking through LinkedIn and how to use it. Many of us have been uh, sort of actively using it as individuals and with our summer um, program where we have our remote entrepreneurship project program students. We've got and a number of the folks in that program are on, on our call today. Um, we have been encouraging them instead of completing their final assignments via a, uh, a reflection paper as part of the practicum that would um, only be read by me. We said, let's do it uh, on LinkedIn blog. So folks are blogging their experience and it's great. We, a number of the folks that are, on this call have been doing so and it's been awesome to not only for us at the Veal Institute to experience what they're doing but also um, for them to get experience using LinkedIn profiles and blogging so um, so this is great. I'm going to turn it over to Sunaya who is one of our awesome um, uh, students at Case. Interestingly when I asked Sunaya to moderate today's session I went to go find her LinkedIn profile. I couldn't find it because she doesn't have one. So I was like, perfect. Who better to moderate a session on rocking a LinkedIn profile than one of our awesome students who's an engineer who doesn't have a LinkedIn profile. So Sunaya, let me turn it over to you. And I know you'll be working with Lauren. There's going to be time for Q&A. So if you're in our Zoom session, just let Sunaya know if you have a question for Lauren, um, which you can sort of ask. We can just call on you. If you're on uh, LinkedIn Live, just put a comment in the stream and Doug and, and Elizabeth and I will be monitoring that and we can give the questions over to Sunaya. So with that, let me flip it over to you, Sunaya, and thank you for moderating. And Lauren, thanks for doing this today. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, so hi everyone. Um, I am a rising senior and studying biomedical engineering. Um, as Michael said, I am not an avid LinkedIn user. I think I have a total of three connections now. My profile just went live a little bit ago. So I'm really excited to hear from Lauren and learn kind of how to use LinkedIn and how to get the most value out of it. So um, in a bit, Lauren's going to introduce herself and she's gonna start um, by talking about how to effectively use LinkedIn. And then she's going to do a couple of case studies on specific LinkedIn profiles. Um, with some of my fellow students who are present here. And then we're gonna have, like Michael said, some time for questions at the very end. So I'll turn it over to Lauren. Awesome, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Can everyone just confirm you can see it? Great, okay, awesome. Yeah, so we're going to start with an introduction about me. Uh, we're going to talk about your profile, telling your story, um, maximizing your network, some career resources you may not uh, be aware of. And then we're going to do what we like to call at LinkedIn, uh, rock your profile live. And then afterwards, we will have opportunities for Q&A. So as they mentioned, feel free to, as things come up, um, put those in the chat and we'll make sure that we can um, get to that. Uh, at the end of the session. Uh, yeah, so as Mike mentioned, I'm from Hudson. I'm from Northeast Ohio. Uh, my grandfather and my brother went to Case, um, and actually there is a park there. There used to be, um, I believe, an engineering building named after my great-grandfather, Claude Foster. Now it's a park. I'm not entirely sure where it is. Um, but yeah, definitely have deep ties there. And I attended Western Reserve Academy for high school, which is, you know, now um, what was Western Reserve College and became Case Western Reserve University. So I'm really passionate um, about, um, you know, Case and Northeast Ohio. So it's great to be here speaking to all of you. In terms of what I do now in my daily life, I'm an account executive on the higher education team at LinkedIn. So I work with schools, including Case, 
Um, all types of schools that can be on ground, online, for profit, private, public universities, even some ed tech uh, companies to help them maximize the platform and find value there. Um, but one of the greatest things that I get to do is really help uh, students uh, utilize the platform in the best way possible to accomplish their goals. Uh, so that being said, let's get it started. Uh, your profile, your story. So LinkedIn leverages, you know, an amazing professional network that's global and allows you to really tell your story um, in a way that can bring your passions to life. So I believe that it goes beyond the resume and allows you to kind of bring your personality forward and let people know more about you. So what are the ways that you can really take advantage of this? So this is a, a screenshot of Corey's uh, profile. So thank you, Corey, for, for allowing me to share this. And this is essentially what you would see um, if you were just perusing through profiles, right? So unless I want to scroll through and see more, this is my opportunity um, as a user to really catch someone's attention. So we have some stars here. Um, the first one is uh, what we call the LinkedIn banner, um, which at this time Corey's not taking advantage of. Um, number two is the profile photo. Uh, three is what we call um, the headline. And four is the summary. So these are things that are present as soon, um, you know, are the first things that are present. Anything else you kind of have to scroll to engage with. So what's really important about sharing these four things is because this is really your opportunity to catch someone's attention. So we really wanna maximize um, this opportunity and take advantage of it. Um, so, you know, this may seem silly and can, can be oftentimes overlooked, but when you really only have this short amount of time to catch someone's attention, I really encourage you to utilize, you know, the space that's available to you. And that's, um, you know, really like one of the biggest spaces is using a LinkedIn banner. So I've shared mine. I've also shared Jeff's, you know, who's now the executive chairman at LinkedIn. And it's really just another opportunity to tell them a little bit more about you, to share your personality. Um, so you can see this is here is a, an article that was published in Forbes, um, you know, 10 LinkedIn background photo ideas to make your profile stand out. If you just type in, you know, LinkedIn background or LinkedIn banner into Google, you'll get a lot of great examples of ways that you can just add something quickly. If you want to put more thought into it, canva.com is an amazing website for, for all things creative. Um, but specifically for LinkedIn banners that you can customize. So it can be a quote. Um, it can be a beautiful picture of case, um, you know, it can be examples of work, you, work you've done or if you've presented, things like that. It's just another opportunity for you to really share your personality, um, another place to talk about who you are, and I really encourage you to take advantage of it. So then, of course, you obviously need a photo. And, and the more professional uh, and welcoming that photo is, and, and we encourage it to just be of you, it can be a headshot. Um, you know, we don't want you to have um, a bunch of other people in the photo, so it's confusing about who's who. Um, but interestingly, or, or maybe not so surprisingly, you get way more profile views and connection requests, inclusive of messages, uh, if you have a, a photo. So. That's kind of a no-brainer, um, but I always want to make sure, um, you know, that everyone has a photo because that's going to be the number one thing that people look at. Then is the, the, the summary. So that's a really important piece because it really is an opportunity for you to kind of give your elevator pitch, right? What's interesting is that Summaries that have 40 plus words get way more, um, you know, the attention of recruiters way more than summaries that are less. But what I would say is that if you, you know, if you looked back on Corey's profile and we'll go through it again, the summary is not automatically expanded. So you really only have, you know, a sentence or two to get that person's attention before they expand it. And so it's really easy, you know, in this in this example to kind of get caught up in like being very professional and saying, you know, like mine says, like sales leader, you know, with demonstrated success in crushing quotas or what have you. 
Um, and you definitely want to be clear about who you are, but this is also an opportunity to set yourself apart. So feel free to share your passions. Like if you love hiking or you like, um, you know, you're passionate about a, a not-for-profit or what have you, be sure to share this because that's when it, what is going to be memorable and that's what's going to uh, allow a user to get interested and want to expand your profile and to read, to read more. Also, there's the opportunity to add examples of your work. And if you were to look at mine, I have a bunch of media pieces that actually don't have anything to do with my day job, but that I'm really proud of. So I'm in, in, involved with an NGO in Ghana. Um, I've had a couple of blog posts written about me and I've done two podcasts. And those are really important to me. And even though they're not necessarily um, related to the work that I do every day, the work that I get paid for, it tells a really good story about who I am, that I'm a well-rounded, passionate person. And that's a great opportunity for you to share that here. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, your, your blog posts, your articles, or what have you, any work that you've done that you've submitted digitally, maybe a video or anything that you've been a part of, use this space um, to share that because it is really eye-catching and it looks incredibly um, professional. So don't feel like you need to be limited in terms of what you can and can't share in this space. Again, you know, mine is really what my passions are. It's just another opportunity for you to take advantage of this space and really show who you are as a person, you know, beyond just what you do in school or at work. So one thing that's really important are skills and endorsements. So this is this can kind of seem like a throwaway, you know, thing because it is like self-regulated. It's it's not like that these are applied to you. But what's really important to know about skills is that members who add them, you know, receive more profile views, but also um, you know, what some people may or may not realize is that nine out of 10 recruiters use LinkedIn to hire. And skills are a really big piece of how that system works for them to find um, individuals. So if they have a job posting, whether it's an internship or a full-time position, they're going to want to look for people that have certain skills. And the people that have those skills that also fit the other criteria are going to rise to the top in terms of um, you know, what they're looking for, the, the profiles that they, they analyze and view. So it is important to, you know, be adding these um, skills and requesting endorsements for them, because as you are going on your career journey, these are going to be populated by recruiters and you don't want to be um, looked over just because you didn't have these added to your profile. So what does that look like? This is a, essentially a screenshot of the recruiter tool. And as a recruiter or anyone who's looking to hire, you kind of go through and say what the job title is, what the location is, and then what the, what the skills are. And so it's gonna pull everybody up who has those, you know, those skills. And a great way to get an idea of what skills you should have added to your profile is to use the job search tool and find the jobs that you're most interested in. So even, you know, a lot of you are rising seniors, you know, you still have another year of school, but it's great to start peppering your, um, your profile with these types of skills, um, the skills that you're gaining in school, the skills that you gain in your internship, but also the skills that you know the recruiters are looking for. So if you go and you search what your dream job is or what you think you'll likely do out of college, um, start analyzing and understanding what are the common skills that show up in those job descriptions and start working those into your profile um, and requesting uh, people to endorse you for that. Another great thing that is uh, that's an awesome uh, tool that you can access being part of case is LinkedIn learning. So LinkedIn learning has um, you know one of the largest uh, uh, ed tech uh, learning opportunities that exist where you can learn all different types of skills. And one thing that we've recently rolled out is assessments. So if there are some really specific skills, whether it's, it's like coding or SQL, Photoshop, 
any of these skills, you have the opportunity to take a quiz and receive a badge that lives on your profile that lets recruiters know that not only do you have a skill, but you've proven um, to LinkedIn based off of this assessment um, that, you, that you do actually have that skill and deserve you know, the badge that lives on your profile. So this is a great way to kind of reinforce the skills that you already have or seek out opportunities to potentially learn new skills that maybe you don't have, but you've seen are a requirement or a nice to have for a lot of the jobs that you're interested in. So requesting recommendations. This is so important and such a great opportunity, but it's also kind of hard to do. It's a little nerve wracking. Um, you know, recommendations really help you build credibility. If you ever go on LinkedIn and you see someone who has a lot of recommendations, um, you know, you know that that's a person who, you know, is kind of brave enough to put themselves out there and let people, you know, share their feedback. Um, you know, with that person in a public way. Um, now, it can be kind of, you know, for a student potentially confusing about who you could ask, you know, for a recommendation. But you could ask your professors, you could ask people you've done part-time work for, you could ask people you've worked with on campus, people that run clubs, um, you know, you could ask Mike potentially for a recommendation. Uh, there are all, there's a, ver uh, a myriad of people in your network that you can reach out to for a recommendation. And the way that you uh, request these recommendations specifically, um, which I think, you know, kind of takes some of the awkwardness out of it, is to really be specific about what you're requesting a recommendation for. So don't be afraid to kind of take a first pass at that recommendation reach out to your professor and say, you know, I'm a rising senior, I'm thinking about my career, I'd like to build out my LinkedIn profile, you really respected or were proud of the work that I did on this group project or on this paper. Um, how do you feel about recommending me? And these are the, you know, the three, this is the three sentences that I think reflect the work that I did. Would you feel comfortable with recommending me for this? And you know, if if not, you know, feel free to um, manage that or edit that, um, you know, to uh, to whatever they feel comfortable with. And you can send this out to all different types of people, and it's a great way to kind of show recruiters right away that you are thinking about your career, that you've had experience, that people were excited and proud to work with you. So maximizing your network. Now that you have your story built out and you're being really, you know, clear about who you are and what your personality is and what you can potentially bring to a new employer, how do you maximize this amazing network, LinkedIn, your network, to really bring your personality to life, to share who you are and really tell, you know, tell your story to the people that matter? So what you want to do is gain, you know, we really encourage you to gain knowledge. So as you're embarking on this journey of starting your career, potentially, you know, you may be working in a certain vertical that relates to your major, you know, you want to better understand what's going on in the marketplace, especially for companies that you're going to potentially apply to work for. It's important to follow them so that you understand what's going on in their world, like what we have going on right now. Um, you know, with a lot of uncertainty. How are they handling it? How are they pivoting? How can you identify some of the obstacles or potential opportunities that exist in their future so that you can speak knowledgeably about this position that's available to you or interest in a, pos a potential uh, position? So following companies is gonna be a great opportunity for you to really get a better understanding of how they function and how you may be able to fit into their culture um, and start making an impact there. Um, the next thing, which uh, seems maybe kind of silly or maybe not intuitive, is that LinkedIn has hashtags. So it, you can hashtag anything on the platform, but there are definitely different hashtags um, that have a more significant following. So the example that I have here is higher education because that's where I live um, in the higher education space. 
So when I uh, hashtag higher education, since there are 8.6 million followers, my post ends up in their feed, even if they don't follow me. So this is really a great tool to be using when you are writing those blogs or any type of content that you're posting on the platform. Um, utilizing these hashtags is going to get your posts seen by a huge, you know, massive number of people that's going to allow you the opportunity to connect with different people, potentially go viral, depending on what you're posting, um, that sort of thing. So uh, there is a, a list, I can kind of follow up with that of, you know, the top trending hashtags. It's usually like, you know, hashtag entrepreneurship, hashtag innovation, um, right now, coronavirus and COVID-19 are really pop popular hashtags. But if you, you know, go into the search bar and you, you know, select hashtag biochemical engineering or whatever your um, career path, trajectory, vertical major is, you'll get to see, you know, what are the trending hashtags in my, um, you know, respective uh, focus and, you know, who's posting, what kind of what are the most engaging conversations that are happening? Do some research and really under, you know, get a better understanding of what's happening in your space. That's really going to help you, um, you know, when you want to engage and you want to start sharing on the platform. So when it comes to, um, you know, career resources, so, so you're following companies, you're following hashtags, you're collecting your information, you're starting to better understand, you know, where you want to be in this space. How, you know, how do you, you know, start utilizing LinkedIn as a tool to get you where you want to go? Um, one of the best ways to do that is to signal that you're open to opportunities. So there is a section, um, you know, in LinkedIn on your profile that allows you to let the, your network or just recruiters know that you are open to opportunities. That can be remote opportunities, full-time, contracts, part-time, volunteer opportunities, um, you know, whether it's immediate or you're flexible, where you want them to be, what the job titles are that you're interested. This is a great way, you know, even if you're you know, transitioning out of an internship or you're preparing for the future, this is a great way to get a better understanding of what's out there and also who may potentially be interested in you. So I definitely encourage you to take advantage of this because this is going to get your profile seen by a whole new network of people. Also, you have the opportunity to engage uh, your uh, Case alumni network. So this is my opportunity to kind of troll my brother here because he is Case, Case alumni. So if anyone has any interest in, in working for a G League basketball team, you can definitely hit him up. Um, but you can see here that you have 58,000 alumni. You're able to segment by the year that they worked, where they live, what they do. You have this amazing tool that, that you have access to that will let you really um, kind of hone in on potential alumni that you can network with. So this is a great tool, and I certainly encourage you to take advantage of it or even just play around with it. Also sharing updates and publishing posts. So we talked about hashtags and a little bit about the way that you can integrate that into your publishing strategy. So when it comes to publishing on LinkedIn, there's really two ways to do that. There are updates. So there's an update that you add to your profile. And then there are articles like the blog that, Mark, uh, that Mike was referring to. So we call those articles. And we also are in a beta uh, for newsletters. And so there are all these different ways that you can engage on the platform. So the way that we kind of, you know, differ, um, differentiate between these two is that for updates, it's really your opportunity to like share links, articles, images, quotes, kind of um, more short form uh, information that your followers might be interested in. It's a great place to repost content that you're interested in. And then publishing in terms of articles and, and newsletters is really an opportunity to deeper, go deeper on a topic and really share, you know, your thoughts and your opinion, which can, which can definitely be, um, you know, a little nerve wracking. I didn't write my first article. Technically, it was a newsletter until I think I was like two years into LinkedIn. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it, you're definitely putting yourself out there. So, 
um, which is awesome. And I encourage everyone to do it. Um, but, but yeah, so you want to think about those two things, you know, a little bit differently uh, in, in the way that they function. So the best practices for publishing content on LinkedIn is really creating a headline that captures attention. Uh, including a photo is awesome. They always, you know, really stand out, whether that's a photo of you or, you know, some, some kind of clip art. We definitely encourage you to include a photo. Um, definitely, you know, be authentic. Use your voice. Uh, LinkedIn, I think we have like 2 billion impressions of content a day. So you really want to be standing out because um, you know, you, you want to get your voice heard. So be true to who you are because you have an, a unique, amazing voice and people want to hear it. Um, so definitely be authentic. You know, think about who your audience is. Use those hashtags um, to really hone in on your audience. Um, you know, after you've done your research uh, by following companies, following influencers, things like that, um, you know, think about your audience, tag them. You know, if you have ideas about the ways uh, that things should be done better at a, a certain company, or you have expectations of, of what you want a company to do, or you have thoughts on um, something that's happened in the news, you know, hashtag them, at them, you know, get their attention. It's a great way for your post to get um, more attention, which can, can lead to potentially new networking opportunities or, or job opportunities. And article length definitely matters. Um, you know, you don't want to publish like a 12 page paper on LinkedIn, although, you know, I think you potentially could, um, but you want to, you know, play in the space of, uh, of our digital world where we do have, you know, some limited, um, attention spans. So, you know, you want to, you want to keep it, uh, you know, clear, uh, and concise, uh, when sharing your thoughts and ideas, because there is going to at a certain point be a time when people kind of opt out um, and stop reading. So, so those are some, some great best practices. Uh, here are some examples you know, of ways that um, some students have done a great job of uh, you know, using photos, eye-catching eye -catching photos with great headlines that really draw you in. Um, you know, this was a, someone who ended up getting a marketing specialist position at Cisco. You know, anyone that's in marketing you know, or sales um, you know, knows that you have to really stretch your creative muscles to engage um, and kind of show off, you know, your ability to kind of do the job. And that's the great thing that you can do with publishing is you can show off um, your skills and, and your thoughts and, and, you know, what you could potentially bring to a position. So this is a great story. Um, this Kevin story, this is actually, I'm co-opting a colleague's story, but he went to speak um, at UNC and, and Kevin uh, was an MBA and he came up to my colleague and was saying that he had all these ideas for the ways that LinkedIn could work more effectively for an MBA. And my colleague Rob, you know, said, you know, this is great, but like, why don't you put it in an article on LinkedIn? You know, you have all these great, UX um, ideas, put it on LinkedIn, and it got the attention of some of the, the tech team, uh, the product team, and it got him an interview at LinkedIn. I think he ended up uh, going to Google, um, but this article you know, was really him saying like, I'm interested in, in the user experience. I wanna learn more about product. This is the way that I'm seeing it. This is the way that I'm thinking about it. These are my unique ideas. Um, you know, putting that into the space really set him apart um, from, you know, a lot of other people uh, in the, you know, interview and applicant pool. So this is definitely something that you want to take advantage of, but don't feel like you need to have, you know, a profound, um, you know, thought or voice or, you know, unique, terribly unique thing to offer the space. Um, you know, what you're learning, what you're passionate about, like there is a place for it on LinkedIn and you only get comfortable um, or get, you know, get great or effective at something with practice. So I think it's great that you guys are starting to engage um, the articles on LinkedIn because this is going to get you more comfortable um, with playing around with those, you know, those different tools and, and adding them to your toolkit. 
just checking my watch here to make sure that we're on time. Okay, awesome. So that uh, was kind of our, you know, overview of, of how to tell your story, how to maximize your network and some career, potential career um, tools that are available to you. So I'm sure the people whose profiles I'm about to um, rock, as we say, um, probably have some ideas or thoughts, um, you know, about, uh, you know, what they may want to add or remove or change. Um, so, you know, so not to be redundant, but we'll just kind of go through these as an example and kind of talk about just sort of reiterating in a, in a real, um, you know, life example. Uh, so Joshua has a great profile. You can see here um, that he has his headline he has an about section that's a little probably maybe a little less than 40 words so we'd want to um, maybe make some changes on that his uh article looks great it got a lot of engagement four comments which is great um you know he had a nice intro he used a hashtag he has an image so that's great to see and then also he does have some skills and endorsements and i believe it looks like he maybe took um the Microsoft Word um, assessment, which is great. Um, so, you know, what I think is interesting about Josh um, is, you know, his title is very specific to, you know, what he is, you know, interested in doing, his experience. And I really encourage you to take advantage of this space. So a lot of, um, you know, this automatically, this automatically um, becomes, you know, what your current level of experience is, but you have the opportunity to, to change that. So I encourage you to um, kind of show your personality here. For example, I believe mine is, ooh, it's, uh, I can't remember it, but it's like experienced seller, um, uh, voracious reader, and something else. So it's, it's, I'm trying to really share my personality and talk a little bit more about the things that I'm passionate about. Um, so if you want to integrate a little bit of that in there, it's great that you're talking about the skills that you have right up front, but there's definitely opportunities, you know, for you to share that elsewhere. Um, you know, you may want to add a little personality and, and flair to, um, you know, to your title. And then additionally, you know, about in your about section, just take advantage of, of this to talk about who you are and, and what makes you different. I'm sure you are hardworking, dedicated, and a quick study, but what are, can you tell that, tell that to us in a story? Can you, you know, can you share a quote that you're passionate about? How can you make that come to life a little bit more? And then as I mentioned, you know, with the, with the hashtags, Take advantage of the hashtags, um, you know, that are going to get the attention of people, um, you know, that you admire or that, or that you're interested in, you know, companies, things like that. Um, you know, this is a great way to say like, this is what I'm doing. These are the skills that I'm learning. This is what I'm excited about bringing, you know, to the space. So take advantage of those. And I would also say that when you get comments or reactions, when someone comments on your, um, your article, that shows up in their profile and their networks um, feed. So that shows up in their feed and their networks feed. So, you know, be the person that goes in and likes or comments on every comment that you get, because that creates this amazing cycle that really spreads your um, you know, your article, um, or your post kind of far and wide in the network. And you're able to do some analysis on, you know, how viral or how engaging your posts have become. So I'm going to go to the next one. I just keep looking at my watch because I want to make sure that we are good on time, which I believe that we are. Uh, so this is Michaela's profile. Um, so Michaela actually has some activity, which is great. You can see here that she's been engaging on the platform. And when, you know, as I just mentioned, whenever you have activity, you know, you, that shows up in the person that you comment on or at in their network as well. So it's important to really be active, you know, early and often on the platform because 
any engagement, whether it's a like or a share, you really don't have to put incredible amount of thought into it. As long as you're engaging, it's a great way um, for your profile to get surfaced. So Michaela has an awesome banner. It's really beautiful. I love travel. So this would you know, be really interesting to me because I would want to know, you know, where is this? Like, maybe this is someplace I want to go. Um, and that's actually a great conversation starter, you know, when, when you're reviewing profiles or looking to hire someone, um, you know, that's a place that you can start in an interview. So for this, I want to, you know, talk about the experience here because you can see um, she has a summer internship. Um, but right now doesn't really have a description of what she's doing, you know, in that internship, you know, for her online tutor, she says very clearly what she did, which was that she was a, you know, a tutor of high school students. Um, so, you know, she has all this great experience. What, I, what again, I would reiterate and what I would recommend is to really be focusing on this in the lens of, you know, the job that you want or what you're currently seeking. So I would encourage Michaela to, you know, take a look at those roles that she's interested in, find out what the skills are, and then start peppering um, this space with those different keywords. And that's really important because a recruiter, in addition, also uses, um, you know, search engine optimization to troll um, profiles for the keywords that are most important to them. So, you know, although for sure you were, you were tutoring high school students, you know, for SAT biology test, I'm sure there was a lot more that you were doing in terms of organization or leadership or things like that, that you can add. Sometimes you have to be a little creative, um, you know, and maybe take some, some liberties, but be proud of the work that you, you've done. It has tremendous value um, and see how you can align the skills that are required of the positions that you're seeking with the work that you've already done. Um, and as much as you can, you know, include valuable and interesting um, language and data in here, um, that's just gonna make you more marketable and, and, and make your profile seen um, to, to more um, recruiters. And again, just to reiterate the title here, so you can see a student at Case Western Reserve University, certainly that is the case, um, but there's, you know, but that's something that, you know, an individual already sees on the right side of the, the main page. So this is really an opportunity to potentially say, you know, rising senior with, um, you know, research experience seeking opportunity X, Y, Z. So definitely take advantage of this, you know, eye-catching space that allows you to kind of start those conversations or get people's attention um, right off the bat um, so that you can get that interview and or, or, or get that, you know, networking coffee opportunity to um, to kind of start your career. Okay, lastly, Corey, who was very kind and was already featured once, um, you know, similarly here, um, you know, just to take advantage uh, of the space, you know, add a LinkedIn banner, you know, what's something that you're really passionate about. I think it's awesome, you know, that you have this, you know, summer um, analyst position. Uh, maybe you can say, like, you know, in this, you know, in this uh, space, in your title space, like, what are you learning? What are you interested in? How are you bringing the skills that you have to this role, right? So you're an aerospace and mechanical engineering junior. How are you using, you know, that actually would be an amazing post. And I'm sure that's part of the post that you're, you know, you're going to do. How, how do the skills that I'm learning in school apply to the real world? So play around with that title or just share what you're passionate about. I know, um, Corey, that you're, um, you know, in some, in some groups, I believe that were like maybe we're promoting, um, I can't remember what they were, but they were some interesting groups. Maybe share some of those passions as well, you know, in your about section. Um, it's awesome that you, you mentioned all the amazing skills that you have. I'd love to see some of those skills, um, maybe in the skills and endorsements section. Um, you know, it's also great that you're sharing your strengths, but the one thing that I'll say is that people, um, you know, want to hire people they like. They want to hire people they want to work with. 
So don't be afraid to show your personality and say what you're passionate about. People want to be around people that, you know, have lives outside of work and, and have, you know, rich personality and experience. Um, definitely don't shy away from that. Like let who you are, you know, shine because I, I think it's going to pay off for you, um, you know, in the networking that you do. And again, um, you know, in the experience, um, you know, feel free to just share what you're learning, how you're engaging, you know, really beef, beef up this section here. Um, and also for everyone, you know, I'm sure at Case, I know from my brother's experience that you guys are doing amazing work, wonderful projects, awesome, cool things that you're studying and engaging with, you know, share that, um, you know, all across the profile, you know, even just because it's in school, I don't think students do that enough. Like I feel, um, you know, that there's so many exciting things that you guys are doing that I didn't get to do. And if I had been doing them, I'd certainly want to tell everyone about them. So I encourage you to do it because Case is an amazing school and I'm, I'm sure you're doing amazing things and it may help you stand out and, and really show how you can bring the skills that you're learning in school to life um, at work, yeah. So I think we're a little bit ahead of schedule, which is great because we have more time for Q&A. Um, so yeah, we can go from there and I'll um, stop sharing my screen so I can see everyone's faces. I think to start, there was a question asked in the chat, Lauren, and it asks any special tools or best practices that might help student entrepreneurs showcase their business or their entrepreneurial mindset or even connect to potential mentors or customers. So if you have any insight. Yeah, I mean, I definitely encourage you to create a company page. Like you don't, you know, there aren't really very specific requirements to establishing a company page on the platform. And it's definitely gonna make the work that you're doing look incredibly professional and kind of come to life. And you have the opportunity to own that space and, and share and request followers. Um, you know, that's a, I think that's a great opportunity to take advantage of is, is utilizing the company page. Um, I think Kevin had a question, if he wants to. Oh, yeah, I think it's working. Yes, I do have a quick question. Um, by the way, my name's Kevin. I'm a Hi. Mackie major, uh, going into sophomore year, working at the Parman List right now through RIP. Um, so anyway, the, the thing I was wondering about, and this might come off as a little bit cynical, um, but I am genuinely curious how much I need to be using LinkedIn for this. Um, how much, do you know how much, especially on the technical side, how much companies care about like LinkedIn quizzes versus like the actual like certification tests for a product? So for example, SolidWorks, um, a CAD system, one of many, has like this certification ladder where you do like certified SolidWorks associate, certified SolidWorks professional, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and like, I would think that a company would care about that, like a lot more than the LinkedIn stuff. So I'm just wondering like, if there's specific areas where you think like doing the LinkedIn assessments is especially important. I realized it might, be a little hard to give like an unbiased review of that one but yeah no I mean you're totally right like the the you know on LinkedIn it's going to be a very simple like multiple choice like easy intro quiz right so any company would much rather value you know a certification that involves an incredible amount of time and skill um, you know, so I would encourage you if you wanted to choose between one or the other, you know, to take advantage of those bigger, uh, longer term certifications. This is really just an opportunity to kind of, you know, beef up your profile to make it look, you know, potentially a, what we would call an all-star profile, which is, you know, utilizing all of the, uh, things that you have access to. Um, these, you know, assessments and certifications on LinkedIn, they really don't take that much time. So, um, you know, it's just an, another opportunity. It's definitely not going to be a make or break for you, especially, you know, for something that's more technical. It just may give you the opportunity to show up um, in more recruiter searches. Okay. So that makes sense to me. Thank you. I just have one little follow up to that. Yeah. Um, so are they all multiple choice? And do you have like, is there any intention of changing them in the future? Because like the concern to me would be 
that a lot of the things that you're testing are things that it's not like uh, you learn a theoretical, you, you don't like learn theoretically how to use Microsoft Word, right? You just know how to use Microsoft Word from experience. So like, to me, it seems like for a lot of that software, it's kind of difficult to test it, your knowledge of it through like just multiple choice questions and not just like actually make people use the thing. So I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely something that's brand new for us. So we are trying to build this out because of our alignment with LinkedIn Learning. We see a lot of opportunities for LinkedIn to kind of be recruiters one stop shop to like assess someone. And the other thing is, is that assessments allow, especially when there's like a rubric for them, it allows people to kind of remove some bias that may exist that they don't recognize some implicit bias. So you really want to potentially create a rubric or a system that is going to be beneficial and accessible for everyone. So that's why there may be some limitations to it right now, but we're definitely um, you know, committed to building this out um, and to see it being a bigger part of our, our, uh, of our platform. Got it, thank you. Um, thank you, Kevin. We had another question from Reynolds and they wanted to ask, they wanted me to ask on their behalf. So the question was, um, they had to remove some job descriptions and information about a project because of some HR issues or problems. So they were wondering how they could still showcase sort of the skills and learning that they got from that experience with those existing issues. Wow, that's really interesting. Um, I like wanna ask more questions, but I won't. Um, yeah, I think that that is tricky because if you are under any kind of NDA or something like that, you certainly don't want to be sharing information that is not for public consumption. Um, I think I would potentially work with HR or whomever, you know, shared, shared that I needed to, um, you know, be specific about what I could and couldn't share, you know, work with them about understanding like what, you know, what can I share? What can I speak generally about? I mean, when you talk about things like leadership and organization and communication skills, presentation skills, things like that, you don't have to reveal too much about the, the specific work that you're doing. Um, yeah, I mean, that sounds like a very unique case. So I would maybe work with the HR team to, to better, you know, talk to them about what I could share or maybe the people I worked with and, and just say, you know, I'm really proud of the work that I did here. I'd like to showcase it. What is a way that's company compliant? Thank you for that. Um, Jaya had a question about recommendations, would you like to ask me, Jaya? Oh, sorry, I didn't catch that. It kind of cut out, what was that? I was just wondering if you wanted to ask your question. Oh yeah, I, I was just wondering um, if you could show how to do the recommendation to request it. Yes, I think I can. Um, let me see here. Going, doing, doing live screen share is always a little nerve wracking, but I think I should be able to figure it out here. In the meantime, Jaya, do you want to introduce yourself briefly? Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Jaya. I'm a rising junior who is studying finance and accounting with a minor in dance. Um, I'm currently interning with the REP program. Um, so I'm really excited about that opportunity. And thank you also for sharing your tips and tricks. This has been really insightful. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah, great, great to meet you. Thanks for joining. So um, there is a recommendation section. So I imagine if you don't already have a recommendation that this may kind of be hidden for you. So I assume that you would be able to find that um, by going to add a profile section okay let's see yes so it's under additional information and you should be able to request a recommendation um you know which is you'll have to be connected to that person and this all happens through linkedin so oftentimes it's best to send them a linkedin message uh, before or an email or however you communicate best with them um, and then they uh, will walk through the process of, uh, of, of doing the recommendation on their end. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Sure.
Um, thank you, Jaya. Uh, I think Sophia had a question about um, when the experience section should be updated. Sophia, if you want to ask that yourself. Sure. I was just curious if there is a best practice for updating your experience section. I've been out of college now for a while and I just have kind of used my LinkedIn as a dumping grounds for all the things I was involved in. So when like is standard for those things to be removed or updated? Yeah, so that's a great question. I think it, it, it operates a little differently. Um, you know, then a resume, right, which is like supposed to be like your last five years or what have you. The great thing about LinkedIn is that when you add something to your profile, it really only helps you in the perspective that um, it adds to like the depth of your experience. It adds more potential words and skills that, that you can be aligned with from a recruiter perspective. And also when you add a badge to your profile, like if someone, you know, is searching for someone who maybe has these skills that worked at that company, you know, you're, you're going to be surfaced there. So I would encourage you to have, you know, everything. Um, you know, I have my internships from, you know, 15 years ago on there, which aren't necessarily relevant to the, to the work that I'm doing now, but it is kind of a fun conversation starter. My first job out of college, uh, in New York City in my interview, she was like, oh my gosh, you worked at Trown. I worked at Trown, this small advertising agency in, in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. So, so, you know, it is an opportunity to, to start conversation. So I would encourage you to just add, you know, everything to take advantage of all your experience. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And I think we're going to wrap it up with the last question. So Marianne asked a question in the chat and I had a very similar question, um, but she asked, what are the best ways to connect with someone from a company you want to work at? Um, should you include that you're interested in working with that company and being involved with them? Or should you just reach out and say you're interested in the work they're doing and the projects, the current projects? So yeah, I'm so glad you asked this question because it's a great one and really nuanced. And I think if you ask different people, they're going to, you know, have a different response. Um, but I am in sales and, you know, what my job is, is asking people for money. And oftentimes I have to do that cold, which can be as difficult as, you know, asking for a job, right? It's, it's almost the same thing. So, you know, my my recommendation would be to learn as much as you possibly can about, you know, the, the position, the job, you want to be really knowledgeable and specific about why, you know, you're interested in either the role or, or the company or both. And I think when it comes to doing a cold outreach, first of all, I would say, do you have a connection with anyone that works there? Um, my like dream job when I was 22 was to work for Pandora radio. And when I got an intern or when I got a job, um, uh, an opportunity to interview, my only connection was like a girl I'd went to high school with who I hadn't spoken to in 10 years, who, you know, was connected to someone that worked there now. And I was like, Erica, would you mind giving me this girl's information? I just want to talk to her. So I can prepare for the interview. Like if you can find someone that you potentially know, whether it's a second or third degree connection, um, going in that way is going to be, I think, way more productive. The data that we have from LinkedIn, which is really good data, says that about 80% of all jobs are given to people who knew someone at the company. That's why the network is so important. But if you don't have someone that you can kind of, you know, uh, get in with or connect with, I would not uh, use the first outreach as the I'm asking for a job, you know, opportunity. I think, you know, I would definitely use the first outreach as, hey, I'm really passionate about what you're doing. I have some great ideas that I think could really, you know, provide value for your role. Um, would you be interested in talking now over the phone, um, you know, or over Zoom for five or 10 minutes about, about what you do? And they may say, no, I'm not interested in doing that, or, you know, but I'll, if you want to send me some questions, which you certainly could do in advance, like these are the things I'm interested in learning about, 
you know, do you have experience with this? You know, do you, would you be open to speaking to me about it? And if they say no, or I don't have experience or what have you, um, or even if they say yes, the best thing to come out of that is another name. So what you want to do, your goal is really to create your network. Obviously, it's all about getting the job. Um, but I wouldn't rely on your first outreach as, you know, kind of like, hey, I want a job. What should I do? It's, hey, this is who I am. I'm really passionate. I'm excited. I want to bring value to you. Um, and people are going to do what's in their best interest, right? So how can you appeal to this person? What is their role? How can you provide them value? How can they use your network to their benefit? Thinking about all of those things is really going to help you create impactful messaging. And believe me, I get how annoying it is to customize all of your outreach but in, in all of my experience, it was, the, it was the super hyper custom outreach that ultimately ended up getting me to where I wanted to go. It wasn't mass you know, messaging or emailing a bunch of people with the same canned response. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that speaks to the general frame of networking in general beyond LinkedIn, just um, seeing how you can contribute to people and what they're working on. And I hope that answered your question as well, Marianne. Um, I think at this time we're reaching the end of this session. So I'll bring it back to Michael and we can close now. Great. And, and Sunai, uh, thank you for moderating. I know um, that your number of LinkedIn connections is going to go from three, <laughs> your current three, to many more at least from the people on this call. And yeah. you did a great job moderating. Thank you so much for doing that. Lauren, thanks for taking time out of your um, Smoky Mountain visit to come yeah. back to Cleveland. We do look forward post COVID uh, when you're back in the region to welcoming you on campus. You've got lots of new friends here and I'm sure a lot of new LinkedIn connections probably post this um, session. So thank you for your tips. I can, as an active and avid user of the platform, I learned a lot and made some tweaks to my profile as we were sitting here. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Yeah, it was such a pleasure to be here and I really appreciate you guys were so engaged and asked really great question. So I hope you found it valuable. And yes, we will connect. Please connect with me afterwards. And I'm always available. Um, you know, you can ask me any questions you have, um, you know, continue to, to keep this, um, you know, line of communication open. I'm happy to help. Great. And thanks, everybody. We've got another session tomorrow with our business librarian, Karen Oy, at three o'clock about um, research tools and Joe Keithley, uh, former CEO of Keithley Instruments at one o'clock on Thursday, if you can join. But until then, have a great day, everybody. Thanks.